What are Auburn's chances with landing their quarterback of this class? Brock Glenn, it looked like he had a good time in Columbus. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. It is a Cruton Thursday as we are joined by John Garcia of Sports Illustrated and Locked On Podcast Network Recruiting Insider. John, thank you for taking a few minutes. You were in the middle of a move, which is the most stressful thing <laughs> on the planet. And hey, right now, um, a lot of Auburn fans are starting to feel a little bit of stress when it comes to the recruiting front. We keep hearing, you know, things are trending up. Things are looking good. They're getting so many guys on campus. And it hasn't really turned in to commitments yet. But a guy that you've talked about for the last few weeks, he's supposedly supposed to commit sometime this month, Brock Glenn the quarterback target. He was in Columbus, Ohio, visiting the Buckeyes this weekend. And it sounds like he had a good time and a good experience. What are you hearing about this? Yeah, I'm hearing the same. Uh, Brock was was really uh, coveted in terms of this last visit uh, over the weekend. A lot of programs were trying to position themselves to try to get in one of these trips because he had taken so many on the front end of June uh, that there was really almost uh, a recruiting win within itself for Ohio State to get the visit um, alone, uh, much less with him actually taking it. So once he actually went up there with family, certainly impressed uh, with Ohio State, kind of the entire layout of their plan for the quarterback position. Uh, certainly they've had uh, you know easy-to-see success at that spot and really everywhere across their offense over the last 10 years or so, and that's something that they certainly sold – uh, to him. Um, but I've always had caution with late programs in for Brock. I mean, I think yeah. no disrespect to Ohio State or anyone else jumping in. I mean, you, you talk to him and he hammers the relationship buzzword, right? There's usually like in recruiting, you hear certain words very frequently, right? NFL, yeah. playing time, NIL is going to become the next one we think. Yeah. Um, but relationships are one of them. And, and I think the longstanding relationship with some of these other programs, Auburn, certainly, uh, even TCU, Virginia, Mississippi State, those programs uh, have such an advantage over Ohio State, which is not something we say very often because of the time that they have already invested into Brock Glenn and his family. So Ohio State knows it's playing catch up uh, in this race uh, it's it's kind of reshifted its entire quarterback focus to Brock Glenn and Austin Novosad, the Baylor quarterback commitment, who's also mm -hmm. headed to the Elite 11 finals. Neither feels like it's a, a home run for Ohio State at this point. So I do think that there's still a lot of optimism from the Auburn perspective with Brock Glenn in particular, who again this week confirmed he would like to go to the Elite 11, which starts next Tuesday. Yeah. He'd like to go there as a verbally committed prospect. Now, certainly, if he if he pauses, it's understandable. It's Ohio State. We get it. But if he doesn't and he follows through in the next few days, you got to feel good about Auburn's chances. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not long at all when, when you look at kind of this deadline that he's put himself on. Florida State, he was there the week before. You hardly ever mention them. Are they a factor here at all? I think some. You know, he had a relationship with uh, some previous assistants at FSU that are no longer there, particularly offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham, who's now up at Oregon, uh, yeah. obviously a former Auburn uh, assistant as well. Um, so I think that was was that combination would have been a true threat in my mind uh, to Auburn uh, from the Florida State perspective, but. They've had a lot of fluctuation with their own recruiting plan. You know, Ohio State has projected like a total reset. FSU seems like it's got its head on a swivel. They had one quarterback committed for a long time who, who's a friend of Brock's, another Tennessean um, in Chris Parson. Um, and all of a sudden they offered Brock Glenn. They offered Ricky Collins, the, the Purdue verbal commitment. And, and they had this kind of aggressive plan to take a second quarterback. And now it looks like the first quarterback, Chris Parsons, not going to end up at Florida State. So there's a little bit of, I guess, weird vibes right now with Florida State quarterback recruiting. Um, and again, 
those relationships are much newer for Brock uh, with Mike Norvell and, and company. Not sure Norvell was was high on Glenn as a you know an eighth grader when yeah. he was the head coach at Memphis. You know, some those connections and that familiarity certainly was intriguing enough to FSU to get him down on the visit. But I don't think it was enough to overcome Auburn. Uh, and again, I think Mississippi State's still in this race a little bit as well, although they've casted a little bit of a wider net, including hosting Chris Parson, who, who is that FSU commitment for a visit lately. There's a lot of quarterback shuffling going on is what I'm trying to say. And yeah. a lot of that is because of, of the relationships and the fluctuating nature uh, of college football in the last 12 months. So I think Brian Harson and company, that kind of continuity uh, as of this, you know, this winter uh, time uh, and him obviously so familiar with campus beyond the X's and O's and football itself, I do think that creates such an advantage for the Tigers. So, yeah, I, I'd be surprised if he ended up at FSU at this point. What does Brock Glenn mean for Auburn? I mean, obviously, and you and I have talked about this before, the importance, the importance of having a quarterback in every class, right? And, and, I, and I think that speaks for itself. Get talented passers on campus. Let the chips fall where they fall. If guys leave, they leave. But you want as many options as possible when it comes to talented quarterbacks. So, obviously, it appears that Brock Glenn is Auburn's choice, but what does it mean if they get him? I mean, Holden Gurner appears to be the guy that's going to be after the guy who ever wins the starting job right. here, and he's going to be at Auburn for a long time, presumably. Um, I I think Gurner has more upside than Glenn does. You may, you may think differently. I, I don't know, but his path to playing time isn't clear. It's not obvious. Now, obviously, he could come in and win the job, and, and that would be great for Glenn. It'd be great for Harson. It'd be great for the Auburn fan base, whatever. Is it more than that? Is it more like, can they get some momentum on the recruiting front, or is this strictly a, hey, this could potentially be Auburn's quarterback, and it stops there? I think it's both, Zach. Yeah. Like you said, Auburn has... It's felt like they've been on the cusp, right? Like one guy's going to pop, and then all of a sudden these dominoes are going to fall. But it feels gonna, like, yeah. There's going to be some momentum. So I think Glenn's got to be the spark. I think he's got to be the kickstarter to that campaign. Um, and then other guys who are closing in on decisions, whether it's Carmelo English, Jeremiah Cobb, um, Keldrick Falk, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys that we know are, are really high on Auburn um, then all of a sudden you could start to see some dominoes falling towards uh, towards Brian Harson and company. But yeah, I think Glenn's got to be that Kickstarter. Um, and, but I also think it's it's the other thing. I think he is a potential long term quarterback option. You have to bring in a quarterback every year. We talk about it all the time because you got to create depth. And and right now at AU, it's a bunch of transfers already. Right? It's a bunch right. of guys who've already started. To started their clock from an eligibility standpoint, and you just know whoever loses the battle, certainly the guy who finishes third is out, and there's a, the potential for, for the loser of the battle, primarily the second-place guy, to, to maybe be out one day. So it, it is very tangibly important yeah. for Auburn to land a quarterback in this class because this entire room could be turned over in about 12 months. Uh, so getting another Elite 11-type guy, uh, you got one in Garner last year, Getting one in Glenn this year, I think, would be kind of the perfect bridge uh, to to maybe shooting your shot with a different style of quarterback in, in 2024. But in the short term, Brock Glenn, especially with the kind of kid he is, he's one. He's a kid you talk to him once and you root for him after that. Yeah. Once he gets around other recruits, I do think it starts a little bit of a snowball effect for the Tigers on the trail, especially – with the timing, right? If he commits and then it's Elite 11, national attention, it's like the year of the quarterback, everyone's there, all media outlets, all that stuff. It just, it's kind of easy to see it forming should that happen, especially with offensive targets. And we know right now with, with the Tigers, I think that's where more question marks may lie from a recruiting perspective on offense versus defense. Uh, so I think the timing would, would be equally as important. And I want to talk about some of those offensive targets with John in just a moment on today's Locked on Auburn. Hey, today's show is brought to you by our good friends at Built Bar. It's back, folks, the coconut brownie chunk puff. For the people 
who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds. You've probably heard about the amazing coconut brownie chunk built bar. Well, guess what? Your friends at built have given you the coconut brownie chunk puff treatment. Get it? Treat treatment. It's delicious. It's delicious. Uh, well, people like it. I'm not a huge coconut fan. I'm going to be honest with you, but everything built does is great. You've heard me talk and rave about how good the puffs are. You guys got to check this out. And hey, if coconut's not your thing, which I think it is for a lot of folks, I think a lot of people are pro coconut. I'm just not, I don't go nuts for coconut. But if you do head over to built.com, use promo code lock 15 to get 15% off your order. That is promo code locked 15 for 15% off. That is at built.com. John Garcia, our guest today, the next guy I want to talk to you about, and this is a guy I really don't know a whole lot about, and I look forward to you uh, telling me about him, the Quavius Sori, the 6 to 185-pound wide receiver. He's a four-star from Chipley, Florida. Is that close to you? Is that close to your neck of the woods, Chipley, Florida? I've never it, heard of it's, Chipley. It's not close to anyone. It's it's in the panhandle, sort of buried, um, close to you know, Graceland, if you know where that is. It. It's the panhandle. It's where Florida it. meets Alabama, uh, and there's just a lot of space, uh, let's let's call it, in between, you know, metro areas. So, yeah, a country boy, uh, 100% of the time, younger brother of Xavier Sorry, who signed with Georgia uh, two cycles ago, a guy that Auburn was, was high on and in that race, uh, I believe, for quite some time. Dequavius, little brother, different position. He's a receiver, like you said. 6'2", 180 or so, but just like Big Bro, kind of a jack of all trades. You know, he's he's the guy in that small town, uh, so he does a little bit of everything, and I think he's more of a like a five-tool type wide receiver, even though he's raw and needs some polish, you know, between now and, and hitting the, the SEC or, or I guess the ACC based on his top eight. And he needs some polish, but the physical foundation is, is certainly there. Um, and if you need a physical line, uh, physical receiver who's ready to block, the younger brother of an SEC linebacker. I mean, that's that's kind of an easy easy sure. sell on that front. Uh, Sorry was, of course, committed to Georgia for quite some time, and since he's backed off, his recruitment has slowed down in terms of the action. Not a lot of visits. Um, there are a lot of schools interested. Certainly, uh, Florida, obviously Auburn, uh, Miami's involved to a degree. Florida State's trying to get involved. There, there is a regional battle brewing but not a lot of tangible action on, on his end. So I do think that probably says he's going to take his time uh, in making this second and, and perhaps final decision uh, throughout the recruiting process. Uh, well, we know Auburn needs wide receivers. We know uh, physically, again, his profile matches some of what you want in the boundary uh, on the planes uh, going forward. Uh, so I do think he's one to keep an eye on, especially as some of these other wide receivers start to come off the board. It seems like Ohio State's gotten all of them this week, uh, yeah. but others will come off the board relatively soon, um, including Carmelo English from Central Phoenix City. Uh, so if you start you know, missing on some of those guys, Sorry becomes a, a, a higher priority almost by default. Uh, but again, you link him up with a Brock Glenn, should he be committed, stuff like that, visits materialize, and all of a sudden you could see some momentum from, from the Tiger angle, especially – you know, given Ike Hilliard, given just kind of the um, kind of the relationship that that could brew, given his ties to the state of Florida and obviously the experience there at the position. Um, but, but we do think this thing rolls on a little bit further. And, and look, being a panhandle guy, you're not that far from Auburn. You know, it's kind of it's one of those areas where people assume, OK, these kids are probably going to Florida State. Or maybe they're going to LSU because of that I-10 corridor. But if you go a little bit north, you can you can get into Montgomery, get into Auburn relatively quickly. So um, yes. it, it's an under-recruited area, but there is some some pull geographically for the Tigers. Bo Tiger Four in uh, in my Discord, John said regarding Sorry, I'm more or less curious to hear John's thoughts on if we have a chance at all. I know he puts us in his top four, but I feel like we haven't heard much chatter about him. So, I mean, the top four Auburn's in there. You think the Tigers have a shot here? Yeah, absolutely, especially if he is on that extended timeline. I think for a lot of these recruits, you're like, sooner the better for Auburn, right? Especially the in-staters or Brock Glenn. You're like, hey, come off the board yeah. ASAP, and, and you feel better about your chances. I think with Sori, it's probably the opposite. The longer the game goes on, especially if it goes into the season and there's a clear need for Auburn at that position – 
those are things that become a little bit easier to sell if and when he does uh, get back up to campus uh, in the fall. So I'm not sure of his visit plans. I know he was at Florida recently, not sure beyond that. Okay. Um, so I do think that's that's another reason why we don't expect something here soon uh, from Sori because he just hasn't hit he hasn't been hitting the visits like most of these kids have in terms of official visits basically every weekend. Right, right. All right, there's two guys in the trenches that I want to get John's thoughts on. Auburn needs both sides of the ball when it comes to guys that will be on the line of scrimmage. All right, here on Locked On Auburn. Mentioned the Locked On Auburn Discord just a moment ago. Highly encourage you folks to check that out if you want information on the show like Bo Tiger 4 did. Check it out. Locked On Auburn Discord is available in the episode description down below. John, let's talk. Let's say on offense here. Connor Liu, the interior offensive lineman, 6'3", 280, Georgia guy, um, took an official visit to Auburn this past weekend. What do we know about Connor Liu and where the Auburn Tigers stand with him? Yeah, Auburn is probably an ascending option for him. You know, I think uh, Georgia just brought in an interior prospect. It looks like they're trending for a couple of others. So you certainly start the conversation there. Other regional schools, Miami, are trying to get involved uh, with Connor as well. Uh, but it looks like he's starting to narrow this thing down. Again, the opposite of what we said about Sori. Looks like he wants to try to come off the board here relatively soon. And uh, 24-7 spoke to him and said, he, you know, he's an aviation guy. And I think that's something that it's huge. him him being a center guard type and knowing that a guy named Nick Brahms, who like I associate with uh, Auburn's aviation program because yeah. he's been there for 25 years. Amen you know, to that. Right. Obviously, you get time with him and all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's a much easier sell academically. I mean, if, if you want to fly for a living, you, you you might just happen to be good at football and a big SEC type offensive lineman. But, th- you know, you're a different person. You're just you're on a different path. And, yeah. you know, we, we talk we hear kids talking about academics and programs being important. But when it's something so specific like that, it just right. raises up multiple notches when you find a school that matches. And, and obviously Auburn excels in that arena. So I think just from that, you start to feel better from the Auburn perspective. And then you pair it with, okay, George is probably recruiting a bit above him at the moment and he wants to make a decision soon. And then your confidence should increase just a little bit from that that AU perspective. So the sooner the better in this case, the opposite of what we said with Sorry. Yeah. Uh, if, if he commits, uh, I think if he commits soon, I should say, I think you got to feel good about Auburn's chances. I don't know if it's a clear cut leader, uh, mm-hmm. but certainly there are some unique opportunities that the Tigers can offer at a major position of need, by the way, yeah. uh, that others cannot. Yeah. Connor Lou, Connor flew. I, I feel like there's something there. I, we can I was waiting for you there. Yeah. It, there's something there. There's something there, John. All right. Um, last guy I want to pick your brain about today. Anthony James, a defensive lineman from Wiley, Texas, previously committed to Texas A&M. Last we spoke was when Auburn offered him, and then two days later he decommitted from the Aggies. Then you mentioned there were other things kind of going on as well. Other um, other folks have committed and signed and all that stuff with the Aggies. But um, he took a, a recent official to to Auburn as well. Where did the Tigers stand with Anthony James, a defensive lineman? They stand in a great position. You know, I yeah. think coming off the visit, he was certainly surprised. He named the Tigers his leader uh, ahead of this Washington trip. And it really seems like it's going to come down to these two programs. So ironically, you know, old Brian Harson territory and that now his new post at AU. Um, so we'll, I guess we'll see how the visit to Seattle goes. Certainly a stark contrast uh, from Auburn, Alabama to Seattle, Washington. So curious to see how that factors into what he wants. But look, I mean, the kid was committed to Texas A&M and College Station. If you've ever been there, a lot more similar to Auburn than Seattle, I would say. So from a fit standpoint, him being a Texan as well, I think you feel good about where Auburn stands. When kids, I mean, kids are smart, right? When they come out and name a leader, it's really hard to change their mind because optically it's like oh well last week you said we were the leader now you're changing it there's there's a business decision element of naming a public leader sure it gets you buzz it gets you a little bit more headlines a couple more follows on twitter uh, but really i think it sets a precedent of hey this school's got a, a clear gap over the next one and when you hadn't been to the next one like see like like washington which is under brand new staff of course 
Now, all of a sudden, it feels like that gap could be too big to overcome. So Washington will sell playing time. They'll sell the ability to get after the passer in a pass-heavy Pac-12, and that will be appealing to a pass-rush prospect like Anthony James. Uh, but I do think that Auburn's lead seems to have, have been a considerable one to come out and say that from a public perspective. And he also looks like he wants to wrap up the process sooner rather than later. Again, like you said, that decommitment wasn't something that that he woke up one day and said, hey, I'm just going to decommit. There was a lot of you right. know overtime factors, if you will, going into that. And then, like you said, Auburn offered right before that point. So great timing yep. from the defensive staff. You know, I've talked about Jimmy Brumba at, at vol at nauseum uh, sure. o- over this podcast. Um, and I do think that that's a huge factor for what Auburn should be able to do going forward here for the rest of the class. Cause a lot of these targets are starting to wind down, whether it's Anthony James, Jamal Jarrett, uh, a couple others um, that are, are looking to make decisions in the near future. So you got to hit on, on one of those. We don't worry about defense as much when we're talking Auburn, uh, but obviously you still have to replenish the trenches as much as possible. And there's a clear need for pass rushers within the defense. So you feel good about the interior you feel good about linebackers, certainly good in the secondary going forward. There is a little bit of a need there for pass rushing prowess. You always need that in college football anyway. So got to feel right. really good about Anthony James. Maybe after Brock Glenn, the guy you feel best about for, uh, among those that we've talked about. Yeah, and then this kind of leads me to my my last question, John. Who, who's the next to commit to the Tigers? Is, is it Brock Glenn? Is that your answer? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if, if he sticks with that timeline, he's got five days to make this verbal commitment, four and a half days to make this verbal commitment before a long flight yes. out to the West Coast, um, presumably the 27th, maybe the morning of the 28th. So uh, I think he's in full evaluation mode. Um, he's taken a bunch of visits basically every weekend dating back to, to June 3rd. So I think this weekend he takes it off and just really makes sure of, of his choice and then probably makes a, a decision publicly right before uh, hitting the West Coast. So I do think timing-wise, and, and in terms of where he's been trending, I do think Auburn can win this recruitment. And again, optically huge at that position yep. over Ohio State, which is going to have the Heisman front runner or second place guy at worst right. uh, with C.J. Stroud. I mean, that is a strong optical win for the Tigers and a needed one to get this ball rolling and, and get some volume on that commitment. John Garcia, how can folks check out everything you have going on? Well, I'm talking a lot about quarterbacks at SI.com. We wrote about some flip candidates today. Uh, so Ohio State's looking at some other guys. Keep an eye on that if you're a Tigers fan. And, of course, we're going to do like Brock Glenn, and we're going to head west uh, to California for the Elite 11. So a ton of coverage planned uh, from SI, Fan Nation, the whole crew that will be uh, boots on the ground, including yours truly. John Garcia, the GOAT hanging out with us for a few minutes on this Cruton Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow to recap Auburn's activity in the NBA draft. Jabari Smith, Walker Kessler. What teams will they be on this time tomorrow? We'll talk then right here on Locked on Auburn.